So cloud optical properties are affected by aerosols, which are broadly speaking the uh, cloud condensation nuclei, and they can change the cloud droplet uh, uh, sizes and concentrations and create small uh, droplets with large numbers of them. Uh, offer more surface to volume ratio so they can scatter more <clears throat> sunlight <clears throat> depending on their optical properties of course this is an animation which obviously I didn't link to the uh, <clears throat> website which I'll do in a minute and come back okay so let's look at this uh, nice animation of the aerosols from uh, uh, NASA, I hope it works. Yes, here we are. Um, so this is showing aerosols. I hope you can see it. I can pull it, put it on full screen. There you go. So it's showing uh, dust from Sahara. There is sea salts. There are clouds. Uh, there are forest fires. There is, I think, some volcano somewhere as well. Uh, there was a typhoon that's going by here. As you can see, there are cy uh, cyclone activities that are floating around. Uh, so this is uh, using various data, combining with the models of circulation. And there are dynamic explanations as to why these have these uh, southwest, northeast kind of angle because of the way the transport of energy from the low latitudes, which are excess energy to higher latitudes, which are deficit in energy, have to go and so on and so forth. But you can see uh, clearly that the optical uh, properties of the atmosphere uh, in terms of uh, reflecting, scattering uh, uh, or absorbing various uh, short wave and long wave energy radiation is going to depend on this. So you can easily imagine that we can learn there are biomass burning sites here as well with uh, smokes from wildfires and so on. So you see that this is a, a very nice animation which shows very high resolution impacts. There are lots of details of these uh, uh, dust containing iron and depositing on the ocean, producing chlorophyll blooms as we talked about before, or even bringing microbes across the Atlantic over to the Caribbean and North America and so on and so forth. Uh, this is the idea of using those to uh, make uh, intended manipulation of cloud properties. And here is an example. This is clouds in clean air here. Uh, so it's composed of larger uh, droplets, but smaller in number. And they tend to be darker uh, as a consequence. Uh, they, ref they reflect and scatter less sunlight. So you can see that here. Whereas when you have dirty air full of aerosols, pollution, uh, dust and uh, maybe lots of sea salt and so on, which is a, a natural aerosol that's generated from the ocean several billion tons every year. And you can see the droplet sizes here are smaller and the clouds are brighter and the incoming solar radiation is allowed to go through, but a lot of it is reflected and scattered. So that's the idea of uh, uh, doing that as well. Here is another way to look at the natural experiments offered by uh, planes and ships and so on. You look at cloud droplet radius. This is 100 kilometer here and 50 kilometer here. And you can see that as the cloud droplet radius de decreases here in micrometers, uh, you get brighter clouds. And when the cloud droplet size increases, they get darker. Okay, so that's a very simple idea. And of course, this was used uh, by uh, several people, proposed by several people. Uh, we will see the name soon. Uh, to come up with ideas like this, uh, where you would go on the ocean and have some apparatus which is going to pump sea salt. And calculations were made that uh, argued that a small, small amount of sea salt sprayed into the clouds uh, is going to increase optical property and offset the warming by so much that it can more than compensate for the um, doubling of CO2 and so on and so forth. Uh, as we said, uh, every time we do this, we have to worry about uh, the uh, unintended consequences, which we will see in a minute. Uh, but the idea is still the same, that many of them 
look promising. The difference here is that in the stratosphere, uh, you had ozone hole uh, or stratospheric heating and then raining out uh, as well as impacts on radiation, vegetation impacts, coral bleaching, etc. Uh, when you do it in the uh, troposphere with the clouds, the uh, general belief is that it can be local, small scale, but still it's unclear that there is anything like a small scale weather modification because if it is beyond a certain scale, it is going to have an impact, dynamic and thermodynamic impact on atmospheric circulation. And then you don't know what the local and remote impacts are going to be uh, unless you have a model which can really do this fully. But as we said, aerosols have direct impacts with all this radiation uh, optical properties, but they also have indirect impact, as we implied here, that aerosols produce smaller cloud, dro cloud droplets and can affect uh, hurricanes, cyclones, can affect the rainfall rates and rainfall amounts. So when there are too many cloud condensation nuclei and the cloud droplets are smaller, you get drizzle and overall rain can be reduced. So rain rate and uh, rainfall amounts can be reduced, so you can have unintended consequences. And we'll see a little bit later on that, in fact, there are also monsoonal effects because you tend to affect the land-ocean thermal contrast, which is one of the key ingredients for driving monsoonal circulation. So we are never far away from doing uh, unintended things when we do uh, weather modification. So that's always something that has to be kept in mind.